A midweek teardown? That's pretty weird. A transfer case teardown? Okay, what's going on here? Have I lost my way? No, no. We're still taking broken parts apart. This is a transfer case out of this 2004 Sierra Z71. It's just a half ton. It's an NP246. Very common four button GMT 800 transfer case. I sell a ton of these every single year. I have them in stock almost all of the time. And I bought this truck cheap. It looked pretty decent before I got it. And when I got it in, it turned out it did not need the rear end. It was misdiagnosed as a bad 10 bolt. The rear end's fine. It needed a transfer case. Thankfully, that's even cheaper than the rear end. Rear ends are actually pretty expensive on these trucks. So now we get to take apart the old one and find out what went wrong. I have no idea. Okay, I, I have some idea. The story I was told is that someone drove this truck in four-wheel drive on the highway. I don't know if it was low or high, and it messed up the four-wheel drive. So they pulled the front drive shaft out of it and continued driving it in two-wheel drive. And then eventually it started making horrendous noises. They took it to a shop who misdiagnosed it, and then I bought it. Well, did you know that these hold fluid? I know most of you are saying, yeah, duh. Well, this was dry, bone dry. Like I pulled the drain plug out and dust came out. So carnage, maybe? It's pretty easy to find out. Let's zip this thing apart. The very first thing we're going to do is pull the encoder or transfer case selector motor off of the transfer case. I actually need this for another transfer case. I like to keep these in stock. These go bad quite often. So these go bad, they strip out here and there's also parts inside that go bad. This one actually looks pretty good. Well that doesn't sound... They're usually not that easy to move. Interesting. Another thing about these transfer cases is that when they are good, you can usually grab this input shaft and spin it. But not on this one, this one's completely locked up. And I was actually able to drive this thing in to my shop to get it on the rack and uh the sounds it made well it was somewhere between christening champagne bottles and a chipper shredder it was it was bad but now i don't think we have very much to do i think we just have a ring of tens now something else we should look at is the case Ooh, it's did you hear that it was like there's loose stuff in there so sometimes, and I've heard, and I've seen this on one other transfer case, that when the chain gets lots of slack in it, it will wear through the case. I don't really see that. I don't think that's the case here. So let's, uh, let's get this ring of tens out and see what it looks like. I got some pig mat down here to kind of soak up anything that might leak out of it, but this was really dry. And I might have to pull some of these switches out of here. I've actually never split one of these before. Oh, the smell though. Oof. Oh, there's pieces falling out of it. What is this? Oh. That. Eww. I think these are switches to indicate what position the transfer case is in. I don't think these do anything, but who knows? Maybe this will make it really easy to come out. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, there's a clip in here. I bet you that needs to come out. Let's, let's try this. So it looks like I got to pull that clip off. I would imagine I should have done that before I pulled this apart. Yep. This thing smells like fire, <laughs> like hot metal. Okay, I don't really know. There's probably a special tool for this that I don't have here at the house. All right, I think there might be something behind this seal. So we're gonna try to knock this seal the rest of the way out of here. That was the toughest seal I think I've ever pulled off. 
But the, did I do anything? I know some of you are probably already laughing at me because you do this for a living. Yes, it did. There is a clip in here, which I don't know if I'll be able to get it off. And I decided to do this at home. So there's that. Okay. So we're just going to use the hammer as the... Yeah. Oh, some parts coming out of this thing. I lived. It's fine. We're good. See? It's not that bad. The question is, did that do anything? Now let's try it. Oh, that did stuff. All right. Now we're upside down. Oh, sparkles. Lots of sparkles. What is this? So there's the magnet. Oh, that feels so wrong. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do that there. Here's the front drive. Now normally I always hear of the chain failing or the chain wearing through there. I don't know how you'd mess that chain up. There's so much metal in here. We're just pulling parts out. I don't know what they do. Check out all the shavings in here. That's a lot, but that's not anything compared to the other side. You think it's dry, guys? What do you think? Oh, man. So this is how it would be sitting. Look at the chunky stuff. Oh, it smells like burned clutch and rust and fire. But not in like the campfire, that's awesome, but more like the something's terrible, run the other way kind of fire. Well, let's get some of this other stuff apart here. I can just hang out there. We are not done. No. Also, what is this? There's some like chunks of something that came out of here. Now, I got the seal out, but this still doesn't really want to come out. And it looks like... How are you supposed to get that out? There's another one of those clips down there. And it's like six inches down there. I've got nothing to take that apart. Oh, maybe this, oh, I see. We should be able to get this off. Yeah, it's just this little stir clip here. Wait, there is definitely some tooling I don't have for this. So let's see if we can, yes. These always get the job done. Another one? Oh, wait, let's get these out of here. Wow. Yeah, I think we can get this one off. Oh, yes. Now, will I be able to get this off? There we go. So at some point this comes off of here, like so. This is, look at all these clutch packs in here. That's probably why I smelled burnt clutch. This is just like an automatic transmission drum. Oof, it smells bad. I don't know why I smelled it. Whoa! Stay. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. How is it going to go back together? It's not, okay? This was a fact-finding mission. Look at that sweet chain. I'm definitely going to need to save that one for later. 
right, let's take a look at this. This is where all the mayhem really is. So it looks like if I pull these out, I'll be able to get this shift fork out of the way. So on this case half, if I rotate, this is the cam that the encoder motor turns. And those are the different positions. That's probably four low. Okay, it doesn't really spin over and over again, but I can do it with the encoder out. Now we're gonna remove the fulcrums. And there's one side. And there's the other side. So now, we get the cast iron fork out of the way. And, wow, there's so much more. Oh, man. Look at that. This plate is actually bent. This is a fork, and it's twisted. That is chewed up bad. Now, will this come out? Probably not. That's locked up. Yep, that's totally froze. I'm sure this comes out with some more of those special... Yeah, we're not going to do that. I'm not going that far tonight. I didn't think we were going to find that much carnage. I thought it would just have a broken chain or something. Maybe a loose piece of metal. Well, I think I've gone as far as I want to go tonight. I got it pretty far apart. The chain was surprisingly okay. It's not what I expected. Clutch packs smell terrible. And there's the drum. I didn't see any damage there, but, you know... None of this is really worth a whole bunch. Where I did see damage, though, is the selector fork. That is really, it's all twisted and bent. I mean, it takes a lot of force to do that. And when we first pulled this transfer case apart, we found some pieces. We found this pin, this piece of cast. And that came from the planetary. And that, that is completely locked up. I'm sure there's a bunch of metal debris in there that's causing that. I think what likely happened is something overheated due to lack of fluid and it broke this and the components from the planetary were trying to lock the movement of the vehicle. It is, it is rough. I just, there's so much debris in here. It's just this pasty crap. This side isn't as bad, but you know. Most of it's settled on this side. It usually boils down to lubrication or lack thereof. I think this could have been prevented if someone had simply checked the fluid level. These only hold about three quarts of fluid and the input and output shaft seals do leak, especially the output shafts. It's a very common part to fail, a very easy and cheap part to replace. It's, there's really no excuse for this type of thing, except no one checked it. It's just like oil changes. You gotta change your oil, you gotta check your oil. I think that's the thing I like to hammer home the most on this channel, is do your maintenance. Don't wait to be reactive, be proactive. Thankfully, this was just for fun. I gained nothing by taking this apart other than a kind of different video for you guys. I got some cool stuff that may or may not end up on my counter, and well, I got a truck out of it, so I can't really complain too much. At some point, this truck will be for sale. It's got about 180,000 miles on it. It's a kind of decent truck. We'll see how well it cleans up. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this teardown. And as always, I love all the comments, all the feedback, and even the criticism. I love it all, and I'll catch you on the next one.